Welcome to iLecture Online and here's one last topic regarding the moment of inertia which is called the parallel axon, axis theorem. What that means is that if you have an object that is purely symmetrical like a bar that rotates about its center or a disc that rotates about its center, if you now move the point of rotation to a point other than its center, how do you find the moment of inertia of an object like that? For example, here we have a bar that was originally rotated about its of it, about its center, rotating like that, and of course I initial uh, would be equal to uh, 1 twelfth uh, m l squared, that would be the moment of inertia of a bar rotating about its center mass, so let's note this as being its center of mass, uh, but then if we now move the point of rotation over here, how do you figure that out? Now the parallel axis theorem says that the new moment of inertia is equal to the original moment of inertia, where it's rotating about the center mass, plus the mass of the object times the displacement of the object squared. The displacement meaning from the point where the center mass is to the new point of rotation. So this distance right here is considered the displacement d. So applying that to this particular example, this would be equal to the original moment of inertia, which is 1 12th m l squared plus the mass of the object times the displacement squared. Now, how far did we move it? Well, if this was indicated as one quarter the length, then this will also be one quarter the length. So we actually moved it one quarter the length of the, of the bar. So it would be one quarter times the length, and we have to square that. And that would now be the new moment of inertia of this object. So this is equal to 1 12th ml squared plus uh, one quarter squared would be 1 16th ml squared. And of course, if we combine that, we need to find the, uh, the uh, common denominator, which is, it looks like it's 48. So this can be written as 4 over 48 ml squared plus 3 over 48 ml squared, which is equal to 7 over 48 ml squared. Definitely a higher moment of inertia, a greater moment of inertia by moving it to a point other than its center of mass. So that's how you would find the moment of inertia of a bar that now rotates at a point different than its center mass. A second example that I have for you here is a solid disk that has a piece cut out. It has a circular piece cut out where that circle piece has a diameter equal to the radius of the original disk. So the moment of inertia, I, of this would be equal to the moment of inertia initially of the disk before you cut the part out minus the I of the cutout. I say, well, wait a minute, how can a cutout have moment of inertia? It doesn't have mass. Well, it's minus the mass of this piece that it would have if that piece was there. Now also notice that since this is going to be rotating like this, you can see that the cutout piece has a displacement from the point of rotation by half of the radius of that missing piece. Uh, I, I should say but equal to the radius of the missing piece, which is half the radius of the disk. So this is one half the radius of the disk. So the way you would work this problem out is this is equal to the moment of inertia of the disk, assuming it's a solid disk, that would be one half the mass of the disk times the radius of the disk square minus I of the cutout. Now the I of the cutout, I'm going to need to use the parallel axis theorem for that. So I'm going to assume that this disk was rotating at the very center, moved out to the side. So it's minus the I initial of the cutout minus the mass of the cutout times D squared. All right, so let's figure out what that is. Um, actually, it shouldn't be minus, it should be plus right, because we're moving it to the right. So this is equal to 1 half mr squared minus the moment of inertia of the cutout. So let's assume that this little cutout disk was actually at the very center. So then it would be 1 half the mass of the cutout. Now the cutout is 1 quarter the mass of the whole disk. So it would be 1 quarter the mass of the whole disk times the radius of that cutout, which would be r over 2 r over 2, and we have to square that, okay? So that would be 1 half the mass, of the, the mass of the cutout times the radius of the cutout squared. Now it's moved to the right, so it's plus the mass of the cutout, 
which is one quarter the mask of the whole disk, times the distance of the displacement, and that would be r over 2, and we have to square that. There we go. So now that would be equal to 1 half times mr squared minus, okay, so we have 1 half times 1 quarter, which is 1 eight. Mm, let me um, work that out a little bit more. We still have a 1 over 4 squared, so 1 over 4 squared times 1 over 4, that's 1 16th, plus times 1 over 2, that's 1 32nd mr squared, plus here we have 1 over 2 squared, that's 1 over 4, times 1 over 4 is 1 16th, plus 1 16th mr squared. 1 32nd plus 1 16th is 1 32nd plus 2 32nd, which is plus 3 32nd, so this is equal to 1 half, mr squared minus 3 32nd mr squared. And I have to find this common denominator, so if I multiply both the top and the bottom by 16, I get 16 over 32 mr squared minus 3 over 32 mr squared, and now I can Combine those, 16 minus 3 is 13, so this can be written as 13 over 32 mr squared. And that's the moment of inertia of a solid disk with a piece cut out like that. So the way you do that is you take the moment of inertia of the whole disk minus the moment of inertia of the cutout, but the moment of inertia of the cutout is a disk that could be at the center, but now it's moved to the right, so you take the moment of inertia of the cutout if it was at the center, and then displace it by distance d, so you have to add that term to it. And that's how you find the moment of inertia using this very handy equation. So, used in the parallel axis theorem, the i of the new situation is equal to the i initially when the center mass is the point of rotation, then we add to that a term called m times the displacement squared, and that gives you the new moment of inertia. All right. Very handy theory. This might come in handy on some of your homework problems.